Hello and welcome to the Print Together tutorial on how to create a business card in InDesign from start to finish. In this second part we're going to look at creating type, working with type, colour and also social media icons. Okay, so let's jump into page two where we're going to put all our details. First thing we're going to do is grab the type tool, create a new box and just start typing the details that we want on the back of our business card. This business card is for my colleague Cameron Doyle. Cameron is the Print Together Production Manager. I'm going to put in his phone number and email. I'm going to copy and paste this just to create the web address. I'm going to put Facebook in as well and I'll put in Twitter as well. Okay, so this is all the basic information we want. Now we're ready to style it. So if we select all and I'm going to use the same font that we use on the Print Together website so it's consistent and it's a nice sans serif font. There. And I'm going to change the font size down to 8 point just so it fits within our 7mm margin that we set in video 1. And I'm also going to change the leading or the spacing between the, the lines. Just one more, just to make it a little bit easier to read. The next thing I want to do is I want Cam's name to stand out. So I'm going to change the weight of that to 85 heavy. And I'm also going to increase the size of it just so it's a little more prominent on the page. Okay, the next thing is title. I'm going to make this into caps and I'm actually going to play with the kerning just a little bit for caps just to make the space between the letters just a little bit more and I also want to make the, the leading between these two just a bit more again so we're going to go into paragraphs and go to the space after and just make that one it might be a little bit too big so maybe we'll just make that 0.5 okay the next thing I want to do is I want to do the justification so that this is all in a nice clean line down here. Select all of that, I go to Type, Tabs, which brings up the tab box. Uh, I go to left, left Justify, and I'm going to create a tab here. Now I can move this anywhere I like. You can see the line by holding the mouse down where I, where I can take it. I'm going to take it just to the, the start of the P on the web address, just because I know that's the, the one that's the furthest away. And I release, that gives me my tab at 3.881 mils. Now if I go back into here, select where I want to start the tab, press tab on each of them. It's going to give me a nice straight justified line down, much neater and much tidier. Okay, so I can get rid of my tab, that's looking good. Next thing I want to do is, I actually want to turn the F and the T into Facebook icons. Now, I could do this by downloading them and playing around in Illustrator and bringing them in, and that's all time consuming. So I'm actually going to take away these dots. A nice, easy sheets way, your tip on doing this is you highlight the F, and I'm going to look for a, a font called Social Icons Pro. Now, if you haven't got this, you can Google it and download it and install it. Click on this. Now, straight away, it's created the F into the Facebook icon. I can do the same with the T, change that to social icons and I actually want the bird so I'm going to do shift T instead and that gives me the, the icon for the Twitter bird. What I want to do now is add a little bit of colour. So I'm actually going to go back to my first page because I want to utilise a little bit of this colour and you know we do use blue and we do use yellow on the website so it's actually not too bad, it goes well. Um, I'm going to do this by I'm going to select an image and I'm going to click on the color theme tool. If I click that, now straight away it's bringing up the, the, the colors in these pictures. I could be more specific and highlight areas and, and it'll, give me, it'll give me a result. But I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to click Add to Swatch. And you can see up here, if you go to Swatches, it's created a new folder and it's put in my colors in here. So I can now use these throughout my design. Okay, so if I go back to page, go back to where we were working, and what I tend to like to do is I like to do a contrast from the front to the back of a business card. You don't have to, it's just, it's just something I like to do. Not always, but... Um, so on the front we've got a bit of an off-white, so I actually want the back to be more, more contrasty. So I want to have a darker colour on the back. So I'm going to create a text box, and again, all the way, drag it all the way up to, the, to the bleed area. Now I'm going to go into my swatches, and I'm going to select the top dark blue we created. Now it's a little bit probably more purple than I would want, um, so I might just try the second blue. And that's better, but it's still not probably quite what I need, so I'm going to go 
object arrange to the back just to see my details again. Now I can see that the black isn't going to stand out that well on it, so I'm going to select all. And I'm going to straight away change all of that to white. It also changes the icons to white because they're a font. What I want to do is I'm going to select the blue and I'm going to go into the swatches and just play around a little bit with the colors just to get it a little bit better. Now this is where setting color for print really comes into it. What you need to do when you need to think about when you're, when you're setting a, a design for print is how much ink is actually going to be printed on the page. The more ink, the thicker the ink color and the stronger it's going to be. Now you don't want to do it on all of them because you're going to end up with a lot of ink, but if you can set one of them to quite a high percentage, you're going to end up with a strong print. So in this instance, I want a blue. So I'm going to set the cyan all the way up to 100. Now you can see straight away in the preview, this has made the color a lot brighter, a lot bluer, and I know it's going to print a nice solid blue without any sort of white spacing. Now, I don't need any black, so I can get rid of that. It's probably a little bit darker than I than I want or need. I want it to be a little bit a little bit fresher. So I'm gonna bring the magenta down maybe to 25 or maybe even 20. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna click OK. And that's changed my settings now. So whenever I use that blue it's gonna to stick to those settings. Okay, so that's looking good. The next thing I want to do is I want to add the print together logo. So I'm gonna draw another text box and I'm gonna do Command D, file place, and I'm gonna grab the print together logo. Okay, it's brought that in, but it's brought it in a lot bigger than my text box. I'm going to do an auto fit to box. Okay, it's still a bit too big, so I'm going to do the shift command. And I'm just going to drag that up to make the box smaller, which makes the logo a little bit smaller. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to manually align it with my smart guides to the left guide. And I'm just going to put it down near to the bottom. Still allowing a bit of space. The G can hang over a little bit, that's okay. Reduce the text size just so it's nice and clean and tidy. And bring it back down to the logo. Maybe a bit more space between just to give it a bit of space to breathe. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What I might do now is I might just highlight Cam's name and I might get a contrasting color to blue. So a contrasting color to blue is yellow. Now a good way to sort of find out what a contrasting colour is, is now I've got this yellow, I can actually say, okay, what is a contrasting colour to yellow? So because it's a font, I can highlight the font, and what you'll see is it actually creates the, the type in the opposite colour, so the negative of what it is. And again, I can boost the yellow up to 100%, so it gives me a nice, strong, full print for, for when I come to, to print it. And I might just make this 20, I know 20 magenta and 100% yellow gives me a nice, bright yellow. So I want to add something that's a bit more dynamic as well. So I'm going to grab another text field. I'm actually going to put Aloha, just to make it a bit more fun. And I want this font to be a bit more interesting. So I'm actually going to use a font called Brownie Brownie, which is a really nice sort of hand cut kind of looking font. Make this a lot bigger. I might make it yellow as well, just so it stands out. It goes with the name. When I've got my uh, my selection tool selected, if I click on the box and I, I hover outside of the area, it makes me rotate the box. So I hover out of there, click down, and just rotate. It shows me the percentage. I might just rotate it about 3%, 3 degrees rather. And that's looking pretty good. So if I go back to preview, just to make sure it looks balanced when it's actually got the bleed area off. So that's the back of the car. That's aligning with text. And I think that's looking pretty good.